will be Hemi Kim from SUNY Stony Brook. Hemi, yeah, thanks again for your talk during the colloquium as well, whenever you're ready. Sure, uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. It's, okay, it's uh, thanks very much for uh, the invitation and giving me the chance to present my uh, current work. Um, so let me see, uh, let me uh, turn off the video for smoother connection. Um, so here uh, in this talk, I will talk about the maritime continent prediction barrier. And I'm glad that I chose the same <laughs> animation that um, Eric showed. So th this shows the nice MJO um, precipitate, MJO related precipitation. So you see that uh, in, when we separate it into the MJO into eight phases, uh, in the earlier phases from one to, one to three, it represents the MJO propagation. Uh, it, it, represents the MJO in the Indian Ocean. And then in the observation, it propagates through the maritime continent. Uh, but actually sometimes, uh, and like um, many of the MJO events also have this, uh, is, um, uh, is seized by the maritime continent. And, um, and there is a, a lot of interaction, diurnal cycle, uh, land sea contrast, orography impact, and so on, uh, that makes the MGU not propagate through the maritime continent in observation. And uh, this maritime continent barrier is exaggerated in the prediction S2S prediction model. So today my talk is about the uh, maritime continent prediction barrier, which means uh, the exaggerated uh, MC barrier uh, in the S2S models. So just to uh, make sure we are on the same page, uh, this is the MJU prediction skill using the RMM, uh, the real-time multivariate MJU index uh, in the S2S and sub X models. It's the correlation coefficient as a function of forecast lead time. And here you can see that uh, the best model is ECMWF model, which is about uh, taking the 0.5 as a threshold. It's about uh, 32 days. And the rest of models are mainly uh, distributed between three to four weeks of uh, the lead time. And um, similar, so if you remember uh, Frederick's talk in this morning, uh, he showed the amplitude bias and most of the models have weaker amplitude. And um, here this shows the, the actually the same plot, but separating it into the initial MJO phases. So Y axis shows the initial phase and X axis is the forecast lead time. So if you just focus on the ECMWF model, uh, it shows that uh, the, the brown shading is weaker amplitude. So you can see that when the MJO is all your phase from phase one, two, three, four, when the MJO starts, uh, the forecast, when the MJO is in, in the, initially in the Indian Ocean, then it uh, reduce, it, it gets weaker faster than the other phases. So there's a weaker amplitude at the all your phases. So that means there's a quick, decay of MGO signal when MGO starts in the Indian Ocean and propagates through the maritime continent. And this is quite consistent among all models, like here NCAR CSM1 has also the same uh, issue and most of models have this quick decay of MGO signal. And here's another view of this uh, quick decay signal over the, uh, in the all of MGO phases. So here this shows the phase space diagram, which represents the amplitude and the uh, phase of the MJO. Here, the uh, black line is the observation, and uh, the blue line is the multimodal ensemble mean of eight, eight sub X and S to S models. So, what you see here is that in all your phases, when uh, the MJO starts in initial phase one, two, uh, three, then you can see at the beginning it's already uh, the amplitude of the uh, MJO forecast, the initial amplitude is already decayed, which is consistent with. Uh, Frederick showed. So the talk today is uh, the, about this maritime continent prediction barrier. The, uh, first, I will uh, briefly introduce the impact of the mean state and the mean state bias. And then second is to uh, use some uh, deep learning technique to make uh, this MJO systematic bias correction. And then the third is the uh, loss of prediction skill by the uh, estimate the loss of prediction scale by the maritime continent using the NCAR CSM2 aqua planet simulation. So first let's start with the mean state bias. So here this shows the propagation of the MJO in the observation and the ECMWF model. So shading is the ORL anomaly. And when it starts from the Indian Ocean, uh, Y axis is focus lead time. 
So when it starts in the Indian Ocean, uh, in the observation, it propagates nicely through the maritime continent and reach the dateline. Uh, in the model, not only is in the graph about our, all this uh, mode S2S and sub X models that is analyzed, uh, they show this uh, uh, the, the damping of the MGO signal. So uh, we try to understand how the mean state and the mean state bias impacts this uh, weak MGO propagation. And here this shows the um, observed observe, uh, winter mean moisture distribution. So it's Q850, the specific humidity 850 at the Pascal. And the reason why I choose this specific level is because the sub X models only provide the 850 hectopascal uh, moisture. So here this shows the ERA interim, the distribution. And um, here we try to understand this moist, uh, the uh, mean bias with the MGO propagation processes using the moisture mode framework, uh, which uh, Shidong uh, explained two weeks ago in the colloquium. So I'm not going to go into the detail, but the key point is that for the MGO pro propagation, uh, this term, the, um, the horizontal moisture advection term is important for MGO uh, propagation. So here, for example, in the initial condition, like say uh, in day one in observation, when we have MJO in the Indian Ocean and the suppress, suppressed phase in the uh, Western Pacific, uh, this active MJO convective anomaly induced the Kelvin wave response and the suppressed MJO reduced the, uh, induced the um, Rossby wave response. And this together, which is the V prime, the MJO related wind, advects this uh, mean moisture uh, in between these two, and then if there's a moisture advection, if we calculate this from uh, area interim, then you see that there's a moisture advection. And uh, this makes, after 10 days, the MJO propagates where the uh, moisture tendency is positive. So then we can compare this moisture advection term uh, in the S2S models. And uh, here this shows the, uh, the moisture advection term, this term in, as a function of focus lead time. So you see in over this area, the boxed area, and you see in the observation, uh, it, is, um, it, it decreases as MJO propagates through the maritime uh, through the Western Pacific, but in the multimodal, you can see the moisture advection is uh, much weaker than the observed. And, and then we can we try to understand how this mean moisture distribution impacts uh, this uh, the direction and propagation. And uh, here this shows again the observed ERA interim um, Q850, and the lower panel shows the biases in the uh, eight models. Here this is the um, and the uh, brown shading is drier uh, means the dry bias in drier bias. So it shows that uh, in the all models it has. Um, in the paper, we have the distribution from all models, and it shows that all S2S and sub X models have dry bias in the lower troposphere. And then this dry bi mean bias can impact uh, this, uh, the, the gradient gets weaker, and then it can impact uh, this horizontal moisture direction. And uh, because of the uh, weaker moisture direction and the weaker um, the gradient of the uh, moisture that uh, can impact the MGO propagation scale. Here, this shows the bias in ECMWF model, and uh, they, uh, in S2S models, provide the Q for the whole level. And then you see that this is the bias as a function of focus lead time over the Indo Pacific region. And you see that this dry bias occurs uh, in the first few days, and then uh, it gets amplified. So, and we uh, discussed this in the paper that that may be related with the, uh, with the entrainment rate. So uh, in the paper, we showed the convection occurs too frequently in the model and it's not sufficiently inhibited when the uh, troposphere moisture is low and which is likely related to the representation of the uh, entrainment. Uh, the more details can be found in this paper. And then, um, so for to understand the maritime content prediction barrier, we uh, try to understand to link it with the mean state bias. And then if, so we have the mean state bias and also we may have some um, systematic MJO bias. So here, for example, MJO amplitude gets uh, systematically weaker in the specific phases of MJO. And uh, here we try to correct this to make a bias correction 
are using some deep learning techniques. So I'm not going to uh, explain too much detail, but this is the uh, 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 some deep learning method, uh, which is the long uh, short-term memory cell. Uh, and here, what we do here is we put the uh, S2S models RMM1 and 2 index as an input, and then the output, it will be the observed RMM1 and 2. And during the training period, we train this model. And then uh, in the real forecast period, we uh, input the model forecasted RMM index and get the corrected RMM1 and 2. And we build uh, the model separately for each MJO phases because uh, each MJO has have different systematic biases and uh, differently by separately by uh, phase, model, and forecast lead time. So in here, this shows the results. So uh, this uh, here again, the black is the observed and the uh, uh, blue is the S2S and the, uh, the, the red line is the using the uh, deep, learning, uh, deep learning bias correction method. So here you can see that uh, at the beginning, this amplitude is uh, uh, nicely corrected. And then the following days, the following uh, forecasts are also uh, at least better than better than the uh, S2S forecast. And here on the right hand side shows the MGO propagation. This is the overall anomaly and wind anomaly. Uh, here uh, this shows the ECMWF model, which uh, has a quick damp damping of the MGO propagation propagation signal. And then after using the deep uh, learning method, the, the corrected RMM indexes, we can get uh, some more uh, closer, uh, better MGO. Uh, uh, propagation. So, um, and then we calculate the MGO forecast error. This is the four weeks average of forecast error. And uh, here it shows the, uh, the each, each model that we use. So here the blue shade, uh, blue bar is the S2S model and the red bar is the after we apply the deep learning. So this is the forecast error. The light color is the amplitude error and dark color is the uh, phase error. And for the multimodal mean, uh, on average, it is about the error is about 80% reduced. And we also compare this uh, bias correction with uh, linear regression model, but uh, the deep learning model uh, ha is, ha is, has better performance. And because uh, the deep learning model has nonlinear activation function, so that allows the nonlinearity and allows uh, the model to be uh, complicated. So the third, uh, so we uh, use the bias correction model using the uh, deep learning. And then the last part is the uh, some new study, which is the, uh, in collaboration with Jim Benedict. And here uh, we try to understand how much prediction skill is lost by the maritime continent. So here we use the NCAR CSM2 aqua planet. Uh, on the right hand side, it is the, this is the SST distribution that, uh, so aqua planet is fully covered by, by water only. So there's no land. Um, or no CIs, and uh, it's only pres uh, using this uh, prescribed SST. So first control simulation will be the warm pool SST, which is the zonal asymmetric SST. And then uh, we did the MC uh, barrier experiment. So this is the uh, SST, but here, if you see the uh, maritime continent, the SST, here uh, over the maritime continent only, we use the uh, SST decrease with elevation using the uh, lapse rate. So that acts as an aqua mountain. So here, this is the difference between SS, uh, difference of SST between MC and Wompur. So you can see in the maritime continent barrier exp uh, experiment, uh, it's much colder. And then the right-hand side is the precipitable water. So you can see the dry, uh, dry, by, uh, dry, uh, it's more drier, so that and uh, there is no. Uh, it's very uh, the sub, the convection is suppressed because of the cold uh, water. And here this shows the total precipitation uh, as a function. This is an average of over five day uh, south and north, and it's a it's a arbitrary uh, just uh, from one, one uh, five hundred days simulation. So in the warm pool, you can see this uh, red box represents the maritime continent area. And in the warm pool simulation, it has some uh, eastward propagating uh, tropical waves. But in the maritime continent simulation, uh, there is no convec uh, It's very uh, limited. The convection activity is not very strong. And then we compute the lag correlation. And it shows that in warm pool simulation, the MJO like simulation is uh, well propagating through the maritime continent, while the MC, uh, when we have this uh, cold 
aqua mountain, it does not. So um, two slides two more. more. Minutes, hey, yeah. One okay. moment. Okay. So, um, and then we use this uh, MC barrier SST and use the, because we want to understand how much uh, MJU prediction skill is reduced by adding this maritime content barrier. So we did a perfect model forecast experiment. Um, uh, so here, step one is do the perpetual run. So here we use the one pool SST and simulate 10 years. So, and then uh, this is uh, considered as truth. And then uh, we save the restart file for every 10 days. And then in the step two, we do a perfect model, model forecast experiment. And here uh, we use this restart file to initialize the model and then make a, a 10 ensemble 45 day forecast over the 10 year period. So in this case, we uh, use as a control simulation, uh, one pool SST. So if we compare the ensembles with the truth, that is that give us an uh, estimate of uh, potential predictability uh, regarding that uh, it's a perfect model experiment and only the uh, error comes from the initial condition. And then uh, we simulate the maritime continent barrier and uh, we, we prescribe the MC barrier. So that means uh, when we do this using the same initial condition, but then we have the maritime continent barrier in the uh, barrier effect. So that mimics the current S2S forecast um, maritime continent barrier. So the question is how much focus skill is reduced by the maritime continent barrier. So this is the result of my last slide. So here is the uh, RMM prediction skill by the warm pool and maritime continent barrier. So here, uh, using the one pool, which is the perfect model uh, experiment, is the um, so what is the upper limit of the MGO prediction skill? It's approximately six weeks if the model is perfect. Although there is a lot of uh, question about this perfect model experiment, uh, but it, it it seems that using ten ensemble members, it has uh, about six week uh, predictability, while the current model has three to four weeks. And then when we compare the MC barrier. Uh, you can see uh, how much skill is reduced by maritime continent barrier, and we can estimate it. And it is approximately five days uh, reduction of MGU skill by the maritime continent barrier. Okay, and the, I will leave this uh, and stop my presentation. Thank you very much. Great, thanks a lot. You know, a lot of <laughs> a lot of results were covered, which is great. Um, any questions for Hemi? Hi, Lynn has a question. Hi, Lynn. Would you uh, like to... Hi, hi, me. Uh, it's very nice talk. I, I have uh, actually, I have two questions. The uh, first one is uh, it's uh, simple. It's uh, how much improvement for the bivariate uh, uh, MGO uh, correlation scale uh, after the, uh, the machine learning correction. And, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so the, the RMM predictions, the bivariate correlation is about uh, two, two to three days improved on average. So All it's right, not a okay. big improvement. improvement. Okay, okay. I, okay. The, the second question is, uh, it's quite uh, interesting that uh, almost all the models have a very similar uh, feature uh, is that uh, they, they seems all like underestimated the uh, climatological uh, like low level moisture. Mm -hmm. So what is the main reason? Is that they all produce too much precipitation? They just uh, drop out of the moisture or is there other reasons? Uh, something yeah, so, common, yeah. Yeah, so it seems that um, so here shows the precipitation distribution uh, in the S2S sub X models and shows that here, the black line is the GPCP this, uh, precipitation. And here uh, it shows that the model produced more frequent drizzle-like uh, precipitation. And um, so it is more drizzle precipitation. And uh, here, this shows the moisture precipitation relationship. So here, if you focus on uh, this black line is GPCP and all models you can see here, uh, they start the precipitation too early in the low moisture regions. So um, that maybe the deep convection is not sufficiently inhibited when this moisture is low, and that makes a moisture depleted atmosphere which can uh, induce the dry bias. Okay, so it, it's yeah. a matter of uh, improvement for the uh, convection scheme. 
Uh, yeah, I think so. And then we try to actually increase the interamond rate in the CSM2 aqua planet. So here, uh, the, the red line shows the observed the ERA interim. And here, the point zero, uh, 1.0 is the default CAM6 version. And then if we increase the uh, interamond rate like 10 times uh, more mixing, like interamond rate, then it gets closer to the, uh, to the observed line. And okay. actually, the MJ is also improved um, when the MJ right. went. Well, okay, that, that, that's that, that's very interesting. Also, that's so what uh, we uh, we did some uh, experiments with our model. It's also our funding. That's the entrainment is quite oh, okay. Uh, important. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Um, so there are three other questions, Amy. But if it's okay with you, would you r respond to them on the chat, Zane? Okay, you sure. Did yeah. Have a question. Jacqueline, could you post your question on the chat as well? And we'll move to our next talk. Thanks again, Hemi. It was a great Thank talk. You.